Tinseltown is the first book that I've written that could possibly be considered in the mystery or crime categories. Um, but mystery and crime is what I read. And so that's why this is amazing to me to be standing here tonight around so many of my idols um, looking around and thinking, I'm standing here among you. So I'm, I'm humbled and I'm very, very grateful. In 1962, John Glenn orbited the Earth. It was the first time an American had done so. It was an enormous achievement, historic, groundbreaking. And yet many tabloids chose to go with Elizabeth Taylor stealing Richard Burton away from his wife while they were making Cleopatra in Rome. This was how famous Elizabeth Taylor was, that you could actually bump John Glenn's historic space flight off the front pages. There was no one bigger than Elizabeth Taylor in 1962. She was the most recognizable woman in the world. She learned at a very young age how to walk, how to talk, how to turn and face the camera, how to meet her marks when the director called action. She knew exactly how to sell the glamour and the mystique and the image of, of, uh, of a movie star. Before she was a teenager, she learned all of these lessons at a very young age and then very successfully carried those with her when the studios collapsed in the 1950s and the early 1960s. Catherine Hepburn captivated movie fans both on screen and off for close to 70 years. But author William J. Mann says we never really knew the woman behind the star, and his new biography is called simply Kate. William Mann, good morning. Good morning. Congratulations for the amazing reviews on this book. You set out to really determine what she was like behind this movie star persona. What surprised you the most? Well, what surprised me, I think, was the fact that the, the real Katherine Hepburn was actually even more fascinating than the, than the legend. You know, she was more complicated, she was more sophisticated, she was more worldly than she ever let on. And I ended up finding that the real woman behind the legend was even more interesting than the legend we've held so dear for so long. And she was so amazing at manipulating the press, wasn't she? She was. She was brilliant. You know, she, way before... Uh, you know, it became popular for celebrities to, you know, micromanage their image. Katherine Hepburn was doing it in the 1930s and doing it brilliantly. And the wonderful thing about the way you write is little things that you drop in. That story. How did you find that? Out? You know, one of the great things about researching this book was that I got to meet so many people who knew Barbara in those early years. Mm -hmm. And these are people who didn't go on to then become famous themselves. So sometimes when you interview people who are in the business, as mm -hmm. they say, they're afraid to say something that might be a little bit uh, uh, controversial because they might have to work with Barbara next month. So, yeah. or, or whoever the subject is. And in this case, these were people who said, you know, I can share these memories with you because, you know, it's, it was a time and I've got a, you know, another life. And, and they were so candid and so forthcoming. And little stories like that really give us a sense of who this young woman was and her ambition. In 1958, shortly after her husband Mike Todd was killed in an airplane crash, Elizabeth fell in love with Eddie Fisher. Now, back in the day, back in the, the, the height of the studios, they would have assumed that this kind of publicity would be hurtful to someone's career. Here's, here's Elizabeth's husband, recently deceased, and she falls in love with a married man uh, with two little children. Elizabeth had a very shrewd agent by the name of Kurt Frings, and he came up with the rather, rather radical notion for the time that there was no such thing as bad publicity. If one looks at the lines that wrapped around the blocks to see this movie, there was, the, the interest in the scandal was so high that there was, people flocked to see Cat on the Hot Tin Roof. She created the playbook of stardom. And everybody from Madonna to Britney Spears to Miley Cyrus have taken a page from her playbook, whether they fully know it or not, it all goes back to Elizabeth. 